Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting a flowery window. I came across this very small town when I was hiking with my husband in Austria and I found this very cute window that I thought would look good in a painting. So I decided to take a picture and try to make my interpretation of it. This is going to be a full painting so like usual I want to mask the sides of my paper to make sure I have a clean frame and the paint doesn't bleed out. So on the right is the picture that I took. I'm going to be painting the exact same window so here I'm just sectioning out the area where I'm going to be painting the window just to make sure there's a bit of space at the bottom of the window for the flowers as well. To make it easy on myself, I use a ruler to section out these areas since I want them to be fairly even and having even lines on the left and right will also make the arch much easier to draw on. The first thing I make sure to draw out is the window and the shutter so I know how everything will be spaced out. After that, then you can start adding the decorative elements like here I'm drawing out the arch. Of course, I also started by drawing out the basic shape first. It also helps to draw a middle line throughout the whole thing to make the measurement equal on both sides. Notice how I'm not drawing out the bush of flowers, so it's a bit easier for me to measure out the left and right section of the ornamental areas of the window. And after that, I want to draw out the frame of the windows first. The bush of flowers will actually be the last thing I draw out since it's something that requires the least amount of accuracy. Since my ruler here is not transparent, it's actually quite hard to draw something completely straight since it'll be covering parts of the guidelines that I use. So for the window frames, I decided to just freehand the lines since the lines are quite short anyway. Behind the window here, I decided to draw a curtain on either side. This is where I start making my own interpretation. I left out the bars on the window and drew out these curtains instead. When I was drawing this out, I thought that frills on the side of the curtain would look cute, but for the painting later, I ended up painting over it anyway, so it doesn't matter if you sketch it out or not. The shutters are divided into three sections. I'm not sure if you can see it in the reference photo since it's quite small, but that's the only thing that I'm going to draw out and the rest of the detail will be painted freehand later on since the lines are fairly straightforward to paint freehand. I also like the design of the wall, so after I'm done with the shutters, I'm going to draw out really thin lines for the wall texture as well. There's an unpolished concrete at the bottom of the wall, if you can see from the reference image. But for mine, I want to make this with natural stones. It's just my own interpretation. If you want to make yours concrete, you can go ahead and do that. The last thing I drew out is the bush of flowers. Again, this is my own interpretation, so I made the bush bigger and I'm not drawing out every single flower. I just want to indicate areas where I want the plants to cascade and also more or less the size of the silhouette. Next, here are the colors I'll be using. Chinese White by Holbein, Cobalt Green by Holbein, Vermilion by Holbein, Burnt Umber by Holbein, Haynes Grey Bluish by Schmincke, Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, Graphite Grey by Daniel Smith, Rose of Ultramarine by Daniel Smith, and Zeolo Medium by Daniel Smith, Aquarius Green by Roman Schmal. Let's begin by painting the flowers. I'm going to start by using a mix of Vermilion with Hansa Yellow Medium to create a deeper yellow color. I'm going to use this to paint petals for daisies. I'm going to play around with where they're facing and I'm painting individual petals while leaving the center completely blank so I have space to paint the center later on. Next I'm going to paint the center using a thick consistency of burnt umber. You want to make sure that the paint is no longer puddling. If it's puddling, please dry it off with a hairdryer first. Mine is still a tiny bit damp, 
so the center will bloom out slightly, but it's mostly dry enough for it to not travel too far. I also made tiny flower buds by using the same yellow color. I just painted a small oval and then I follow it up with a thick consistency of burnt umber underneath. For the next flower, I use a mix of vermilion, Chinese white, and a tiny bit of Hansi yellow. And I just painted thin lines going radially while leaving the middle blank. I also made smaller versions of this color. Then I use a thin consistency of burnt umber for the center. After that, I added vermilion to whatever was left on my brush to create this muted orangey brown color. And I just painted more of those flowers with a thicker consistency of burnt umber for the center. As the burnt umber kind of bloomed out, I felt like it was muting the pink a bit more than I wanted to. So I ended up using a bit more vermilion to layer on top of it. The surface of the flower should still be a little bit more damp. If not, then you can soften the blend using a clean damp brush. I'm still using the same color, but this time I'm twirling my brush around to create rose sort of texture. And this is optional, but I just felt like creating different textures for the flowers. For the next one, I use a thick consistency of vermilion. And for these flowers, I'm painting them from the side and then following it downwards with a thick consistency of Aquarius green for the sepals. I want to include different colored flowers, so for the next one, I use a mix of Rose of Ultramarine with Chinese White to paint on lavenders. For this, I just kind of move my brush in a V motion so it's still kind of loose and I continue on downwards until I complete a stem. I kept painting on the same thing facing different directions to fill in the right hand side and I'm also going to add the lavenders behind the yellow flowers. I feel like I have a good variety here, so now I'm going to fill in the rest of the space with the greeneries. I used a mix of Hansi Yellow Medium and Aquarius Green, and I used quite a watery load just using the tip of my brush to create a textured base color, and I'm painting around the flowers that I've already painted. While doing this, I paint a section at a time, and while the surface of the section is still damp, I follow it up with a thick consistency of Aquarius Green to paint under the flowers. This will act as shadows underneath the flowers, which will make the flowers or the color of the flowers pop out a little bit more. I'm only going to paint the greeneries for this section of the flowers which are facing forward, so just the larger ones. And I'm going to leave out where the lavenders, the yellow daisies, and the red flowers completely black first because we're going to paint on the stems later on. I'm being very careful at how much green I put around the edges of the flowers. Then I'm going to follow it up using a thick consistency of Aquarius green in a very dry brush load so I can create really thin stems to follow the flowers downwards. I'm also going to paint tiny leaves on the stems using the same color and brush load. Going back to the bushy area again, I'm going to layer on more Aquarius green and a thick consistency under the flowers because the previous one would have spread out a little bit more and it would make the color a bit lighter. So here I'm just layering on a bit of that darker value for added contrast. On the edges of the right side of the bush, I decided to frame it a little bit nicer by painting individual leaves. I'm still using a thick consistency of Aquarius green here, and I'm also going to paint some small leaf textures on the lighter part of the bush as well. After that, at the bottom, I'm going to paint on some hanging leaves, which cascades downwards. I like to play around with the value of the green, so for the lighter value, I use a mix of Aquarius green with Hansi yellow, whereas for the darker value, I just use Aquarius green and a thick consistency. This way, I can play around with the layering, so the lighter green leaves look like they're in front, and the ones behind are a little bit darker in color. I also try to vary the shapes of the leaves, so some leaves are longer, whereas the one in the darker value that I've already painted is a little bit more shorter and rounder. As I get towards the bottom of 
some of the vines I sometimes like to make the leaves a little bit smaller just to give it a nicer flow and on the left side I just want to make sure everything is balanced out Once I'm satisfied with the amount of flowers and viney leaves, I'm going to move on to paint the curtains. I use a mix of paints gray bluish, Chinese white with graphite gray. At the bottom, I'm also going to use the same mix with added Chinese white and burnt umber to create a warmer version of the gray. I'm going to use this warm gray in a thin consistency to paint the top part of the curtain. Then as I paint downwards, I'm going to switch to my cooler gray. This way, there's a transition and a gradient from the warm gray to the cool gray. I'm also going to apply the same thing for the left hand side. I'm going to be very slow and careful as I paint behind the flowers. You have to make sure that the flowers are completely dry before painting on the background or the window so the colors won't contaminate the bright colors of the flower. After that, I want to make sure that the curtains are dry because I'm going to layer on the detail. I'm using the same warm gray mix and as I get towards the bottom, I'm going to switch to my cooler gray. I'm just painting on lines following the curve of the curtains to depict the folds of the fabric. I don't want to put too much detail on the curtains because I feel like it would take away from the flowers. So as I was painting on the frills, I ended up just painting over it using a thicker consistency of the cool grey. Next, I'm going to paint on the decorative element of the window. I'm going to paint on the arch as well as the windowsill. Just the base color for now using a medium consistency of buff titanium. After I'm done, I'm going to paint the frame of the window using buff titanium, this time with added Chinese white to make it lighter. Once I'm done, I want to make sure that the frame and the arches are completely dry because next I'm going to paint on the frame of the blinds. For this, I used a mix of vermilion, Chinese white, and burnt umber in a medium to thin consistency. I'm also going to use the exact same color mixture in a medium to thin consistency to paint the rest of the blinds for the base color. Again, I'm going to be very careful as I paint around the flowers. Here I just want to show you that sometimes I also twist my painting around wherever I get to areas where it's a bit difficult to grip my brush normally. Next, I'm going to add paint gray bluish into the previous brown mixture. And I'm going to use this color to line the inside of the frame of the blinds. This way, it'll give a bit more depth. I'm also going to use this color to paint the detail of the blinds. You can still see the pencil mark that I drew out here, so I'm just going to paint on the details, outlining it using this dark brown. Then for the rest of the lines, which I'm just going to freehand, I use a really dry brush load so I can paint on really thin strokes, and I just divide it all into thin lines. Then I use a lighter consistency of this color to paint diagonally from both sides and also at the bottom of each row. This detail will give the impression that the blind has a slight opening and if certain areas dry out a bit too light, I would just layer on a bit more color very lightly on top of it. If you want to darken the brown further for a bit more contrast, you can add more paints gray bluish in the brown mix. And here I also lined the edges of the blinds to separate it from the frames. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing for the right hand side as well. 
Now that I finished painting on the blinds, I feel the need to separate the frame off the blinds to push it back further. So to increase the contrast and value, I'm going to line the inside portion of the frame using a mix of paint gray bluish with burnt umber. I also want to add this dark color underneath the frame of the window. I used the exact same color mixture but with more paint gray bluish in the mix to make it look more black. And I just use a medium to thin consistency of this color and then I use a clean damp brush to soften the edges. And I also lined the sides using the same color but I'm just outlining it very thinly using the tip of my brush. You can also use a small brush for this or a colored pencil if it's a bit easier to control. For the detail of the window frame, I added a bit more burnt umber to make the grey warmer and I just created two lines going vertically and one line going across. The next thing I want to work on is the form of the arch and the detail of the windows. So here I used a mix of mostly buff titanium with a bit of burnt umber and paint grey bluish to darken the colour. I used a medium to light consistency for the main shadow. And for the outlines, I use a thicker consistency with more paint gray bluish and burnt umber for a darker version of the color. I also added extra lines as details to the arch and I'm also going to use this color to paint the windowsill. At the moment, I felt like the overall value of the curtain and the flowers look a bit too similar and I want the flowers to pop out more so here I'm building up the darker values behind the flowers to contrast with the brighter colors of the flowers. So I added more paints gray bluish with a bit of graphite gray. I then used a mix of burnt umber with a bit of graphite gray to glaze the top part of the window. After I've done that, now the shadow of the window is a bit too light in comparison to the glaze. So I'm going to use the same mixture from Paints Grey Bluish and Burnt Umber to layer on a darker value. And after everything has completely dried, I still felt like I need to build the contrast behind the flowers. So I'm just layering on a bit more until I'm satisfied with the darker value. I'm fairly happy with the window and the flowers now, so I'm going to move on to paint the background. For this, I use a mix of cobalt green, a tiny bit of Hansi yellow, and a lot of white. I mix quite a lot on my palette because I want the color to be flat all throughout and I don't have to keep mixing and figure out the exact same ratio to paint this whole area. To paint this on, I also switched to a larger brush which can hold more water so it's a bit easier for me to cover a large area. While the surface is still a little bit damp, I want to create a darker version of this color so I added a bit of paint gray bluish and burnt umber mixture to the base color of the wall and this will create a dark and muted blue green. I'm going to use this color to paint behind the windows and also on the left and right corner of the painting to give a bit of a vignette effect. Since I'm doing this on a damp surface, the paint should naturally blend together and I want to make sure everything's completely dry before I build on the contrast using the exact same mixture. I also switched to my smaller brush so the area that I'm painting is a bit more concentrated and closer to the edges. In terms of the ridges or the lines of the exterior, I use the exact same color mixture with added Hansi yellow to paint on the lines. After this, I'm going to paint on the natural stone texture at the bottom. I use buff titanium as the base color. I just paint it all over. And while the surface is still wet, I added vermilion and burnt umber to the buff titanium to paint the edges. After that, I felt like the color needs a bit more warmth, so I added more vermilion and just tap it on the wet surface. I want to make sure everything's completely dry before I paint on the stones. For the stones, I used a mix of vermilion, burnt umber, paint gray bluish, and Chinese white. After I've painted a few stones, I also want to add a bit of pansy yellow on the side and basically just play around with these colors in different ratio in order to get different tones of browns. Sometimes if I want to mute the color but not make it darker than what it is, I also like to add in a bit of buff titanium. So this is where you can experiment a little bit with color mixing. 
I started out by painting the larger rocks and after that I follow it up with smaller ones to paint in between the larger stones. At the moment the texture looks kind of flat so here I use the grey mixture that I already have on my palette and I place some shadows underneath the large rocks and I also felt like the color was a bit too bright and it was bringing too much attention so I decided to dial it down by glazing a medium consistency of buff titanium for the whole area. After that I dried everything off and paint a shadow above the natural stones. For this I use the same grey green mixture and then I follow it up with a thick consistency of buff titanium to soften the edges. And after that I want to dry off everything again and paint the edges using the stone colors that I've already placed on my palette. Then I use a mix of burnt umber and paint grey bluish to create this really dark brown that's almost black to separate those two parts of the exterior further. I'm quite happy with how the stones are looking, so next I'm going to paint on the cast shadows. For this, I used a mix of paints grey bluish, cobalt green with a bit of Chinese white. I'm going to use a medium consistency of this to paint on the cast shadow of the hanging leaves. So I basically tried to follow the exact same shapes and paint it behind the leaves that I already have and also around the bottom edge of the rest of the plants. At the same time, this is also where I start looking around and find areas that I want to fix. So as an example here, I want to build the contrast further from the darker greeneries and the flowers. So I added more dark green below the flowers and in certain areas to make the bottom right side darker than the top left side. Here I also decided to add more vermilion to the center of the pink flowers to make the colors pop further. I felt like the lavenders were disappearing too much into the background so I used a thicker consistency of Rose of Ultramarine to just paint certain areas. And after I'm happy with how everything looks, I'm just going to unmask and reveal the painting. And that's pretty much it for this painting. I really enjoy painting these types of pretty windows. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. The outline will also be available in my coffee shop. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!